What's up everyone? Join us today for another adventure with the fish dude and behind the camera I have my buddy Chris. Unfortunately Chris is a plant biologist so don't pay too much attention to him. So today we're taking a drive down to Park Rainy Beach on the KwaZulu Natal south coast. We are going to go harvest oysters. Yeah, you heard right. So you do need a permit to harvest oysters. Luckily our university has one for about 10,000 oysters or so a year. But we only need about 50 oysters. So it's gonna be a cool drive and we're gonna show you all that we're doing. We're gonna have some fun and we're gonna watch Chris fall into the rock pools. All right, join us for our trip. Okay, so we stopped at, uh, where is this? Shell Ultra City, Shell South Coast for some breakfast and chow. As you can see, my man is really hungry and he's gonna whack it while I'm driving. <laughs> so we're gonna be continuing our drive down to Park Rennie. And when we're there, we're gonna be showing off the beach, its scenery, hopefully some fishermen with some quarantine and shad. And maybe, maybe not. I mean, Durban did have quite a bad flood yesterday and you know, it buggered up the beaches quite badly. So we'll see what happens when we get there. So now we're in Park Rennie. Uh, we're on our way right now to the camping site, which is the Rocky Shores. And this is what Park Rennie looks like. I mean, it's not exactly a farm area. I mean, it is, but it's a quite little town. There's everything you need over here, basically, except a club and a cinema and a university. <laughs> so it's very, very peaceful. It's very calming. Chris, uh, so we got lost. <laughs> like no, we I really didn't. lost. We were lost, lost. This guy uh, doesn't know the roads here. So well, to be fair, they told us I'm going to Caravan Cove. Meanwhile, I am going to a different campsite, not Caravan Cove. So we're gonna. They gave us the directions, and we're gonna keep on driving. And Chris is gonna be your DJ for the rest of the trip. So this is the Park Rainy Rocky Beach. It is before Caravan Cove. <laughs> and this is the damage after yesterday's flood. So Durban had a freak flood and it was insane. I mean, for Durban to have a natural disaster is on another level. Stuff must really have gone wrong. So things are quite damaged throughout the coastline after the flood. Right, so we're here now at Park Rainy Rocky Beach. Um, we had our breakfast, we are nice and full, and we're ready for the day. So if you come with me, I'll show you guys the beach. So this is the Park Rainy Rocky Beach. And on a normal calm day, this place is amazing to fish at. I mean, you come here on a calm day and there's guys pulling quarantine and shad and the odd garrick, like in, you know, from four in the morning by the dozen. I mean, that's illegal, but by the dozen is what we do and hide it in the sand. So, as you can see down there, where we're going to be taking a walk, all of that on the rocks is part of the oyster belt. And the water is quite murky and dirty now, obviously, after the rain. Right, so part of our marine department is plastic awareness. And as you can see, after the flood, there's been quite a wash up of plastic and other litter on the beach. I mean, this is a beach that people use. So, if you're going to come to a beach in the state, do you need any more reminder that plastic is harmful? So, these are our oysters, actually. So, this is the Natal Rock Oyster. And this is the oyster I've been working on for the last two years. And the cool thing about these oysters is that when you actually dissect them, you can actually tell how much of pollution is in the water system. So it's a good biomarker for pollution. That is why I do a lot of research on these oysters because it can tell you compared to the rest of KZN where you find these oysters, how badly affected this area is, which is amazing for marine bio research and comparison index indices. So to harvest oysters off a rock is not as fancy as you, it's not as fancy as you think it is. I mean, this is your tools for harvesting a oyster off a rock. 
a chisel and a hammer. I mean, talk about student budget friendly. So literally what you have to do is, you find the strong point of the oyster, up away from the oyster lip on the rock, and you chip away at the rock. And voila, this is a harvested Natal rock oyster. So if there's any cracks in the oyster or if any fluid leaks out of where the mouth opens here, then the oyster is surely gonna die and it's not going to survive the experiments, let alone the transport back home. So this oyster is actually quite perfect because he's sealed all the way through and all he has to do is be cleaned a little and this guy's perfect and good to go. Okay. Yeah. So this is Chris's attempt at uh, shocking oysters off the rocks. Two thousand years later. This is a strong oyster. There we go. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Ah, he's dead. He's dead. So, hey, Chris, show us your look of sadness. This is Chris looking. Every oyster he's harvested so far has died on the rocks. Unfortunately, if you're not careful when you're harvesting off the rocks, they crack quite easily and they do die. So literally like four out of five oysters we harvest will die before we collect them. So guys, Chris finally got his first successful oyster off the rocks, but now he seems to be struggling quite a bit. What do you have there? One dead one? Oh, both dead. So I was here with my friend Amma, harvesting, harvesting oysters. Ah, it's she dead. Killed, killed this oyster. one is very, very dead, bro. Yeah. Like I'm getting better at harvesting oysters than, than, he, than he is. And I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> I'm in this guys. Ah! How about that? The other one came out. <laughs> this was this was pure luck, guys. This was pure luck. <laughs> pure luck. So, so uh, with this guy, what you see? Oysters. Brad, I have never eaten an oyster, but I'm collecting one. Like, how It's an aphrodisiac. Make the man go wild. This guy is naughty. <laughs> I don't know why I'm friends with this guy. But I'm friends with anyway. Because I bought the chow. Yeah, I love chow. I love chow. So this guy can make a great Zulu guy, you know. You know, back in the day, Zulu guys used to collect water in the lakes and stuff. I'm not, I'm not putting a bucket in my head at all, okay? Zulu Zulu woman. Zulu woman. Now how does Zulu man carry? That does. That's all. Yeah, okay, I can do that. This guy will make a great Zulu man. Well, I eat like one. Oh yeah! This guy eats a lot. Oh. You can tell, guys. Like, look. Like, I also eat a lot of spice. I don't know where the food goes here. Okay, so folks, go for this. These are the oysters. Yeah, so we've got about 32 oysters in here. I only need I only needed about 15 or 20 because some will die in transport, acclimation and all that stuff. So these guys are gonna be sitting in seawater for the ride back to Durban. As soon as we hit Durban, they're gonna be out of those tanks cleaned of any barnacles, worms, snails that are on them and they're gonna go straight into acclimation tanks with artificial seawater. So we're going back uh, after two, two to three hours of collecting uh, oysters, bro. Oysters. We came for oysters. Yeah, we came for oysters. <laughs> he already forgot what we came for. Like it's, it's, it was so nice that I forgot we came to collect oysters. Like 
if it's not too late, I would like to change my, my, my research to collecting oysters. Just collecting them. Not working on them, not just collecting them. Just collecting them. Okay. Guys, so if you need uh, an assistant in collecting oysters, like I don't charge that much because I'm an expert. Like, I'll charge you like. He only killed about 20 or 30 oysters. Why have you. Why did you have <laughs> to reveal this? Yeah. I collected like 25 and I killed like 3. Don't listen to this guy. <laughs> These people are going to Deben now.